Hi, Lola. I'm Caitlin Quinlan. You are Lola Kivron. We are sat in Curzon Soho today um, to chat about your film Rodeo and um, to talk a little bit about your relationship to cinema as well. Um, so welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Um, I wanted to start by asking how often you go to the cinema. Oh, um, I began to, to go to cinema when I, I was uh, 18, 19. So it's quite late because it was not uh, something given my, by my parents. It was something that I found by myself because uh, of a big depression I had to, to go through. And so I, I tried to escape uh, by uh, watching films uh, in cinema. And it depends of the, you know, going to cinema for me depends of um, if I write, if I shoot, if I'm a, because the more I uh, write, uh, the less I want to see movies, to just to conserve the babble, ba babble of creation, you know, and to, but I'm, I'm during the writings, I, I, I love going to museums and to see paintings, uh, for example, to listen to music as well. And when you were, I, can, I don't know, becoming this sort of burgeoning cinephile, what were some of the films that you saw at that time that made you love cinema? I remember so well the first time I saw like a classical movie. Mm. Um, it was uh, in an English uh, <laughs> course, like an uh, English lesson, but it was in cinema and it was Rebel Without a Cause mm. with James Dean. And, uh, and I was really fascinated by this movie because of the colors, really super graded, super, you know, bright and a lot of contrast. And there are a lot of night nice sequences in the movie and I, I loved the, the energy of the movie. So it was the first step in my cinephilia and then I tried to, um, to, pick, uh, to pick up films and to build my uh, you know, own path in the, in the cinephilia. Um, but I was fascinated by um, characters who were completely outside, outsiders, set apart from the society. I remember as well to see uh, The Outsiders by Coppola. Mm. And then I want to, to think about The Conversation by Coppola. Mm. Coppola, I think it's uh, one of my best uh, director. Uh, I was uh, obsessed by uh, films uh, from the 70s. Mm. Um, yeah. And you mentioned films about outsiders maybe, and would you say those films inspired Rodeo in some ways? Or yeah. were there any films that you maybe rewatched before you were making mm, Rodeo? Yeah. Every year I, I rewatch uh, Taxi Driver because for mm. me it's a kind of big piece of art full of complexity in terms of how to build a character. I remember the, the sequence when uh, he, he meets this girl, he meets uh, this girl and then he wants uh, to, um, to go to a porn cinema with her and she's in shock like, oh my God, what, what, what is that? And so it could be, yeah. But I like, the, I like the complexity of this, uh, this character. Do you have any traditions? I don't know, some people, they love to get a certain snack or they love to, um, you know, they always sit in the same yeah, seat. It or, depends on the movie. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you can buy a snack and go to, <laughs> to see a Tarkovsky movie, for example. <laughs> but yeah, it could be, it could be funny. Yeah. But uh, no, I think it depends on the movie. Um, and then to, to sit uh, very in the front of mm -hmm. the room because I, I love to be, um, to plunge uh, mm -hmm. inside the movie and to have like uh, this immersive, super immersive approach. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't like when I'm um, too far away of the screening because it reminds me of the, the TV, you know, because it's so mm -hmm. small, it could be small even if you are in the, in the theater. So I like to be in uh, the texture of the image, yes. Absolutely. Um, it sounds like I mean, the French cinephile culture, especially in big cities, just seems so amazing. Um, the films that are on offer, the number of cinemas you have. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, how do you feel about that kind of culture within France as a, as a country? Um, we, we, we are really a privileged country because of the system, which is uh, super um, Virtues, virtue, mm -hmm. virtue system, because when you buy a ticket, then you have uh, the money uh, which uh, go to, goes to, to um, a public funds and then 
if, you, if I want to, to, to do a movie, I can apply to these public funds called CNC, Sensei, and then uh, you, can, you, you can do movies like that. Is there a film or a recent cinema experience you've had that felt really meaningful or, or kind of monumental? Was there something that you saw recently that oh, yes. affected you? I saw the documentary by Laura Poitras. Mm. At the beginning, I, I entered inside the, the documentary and I, I thought, oh, it's not my type of documentary. It's more, it's super classic and you have interviews on, in it. But then you follow the journey of Nan Goldin and it's super well edited. Uh, and, and I fell in love with uh, this uh, emotional trajectory inside the movie because it's about looking for families, alternative families, and how you build your identity when you, you, are, you have parents who are conservative and who are like a kind of oppressive uh, with you and how you escape and how you build this super strong piece of art. It's super beautiful. But I love the, how Laura Poitras created this, this net, this, um, uh, this narrative thread uh, with this, the portrait and then the, the, the OPSA crisis, yeah. Yeah, it's an amazing film. And yeah. Nan Golden's work is just oh. so beautiful. Yeah, and, and then you can just jump from uh, her sister who commits suicide, she was lesbian, and then you understand that the mother were abused. And so it's like a f super beautiful and violent history of how it is to be a woman in this world and how it is to be an artist and to... Um, and she, um, she, she took a lot of risks. Absolutely. And that sounds similar in ways to, to Rodeo and, and the character of Julia. Mm. Um, I wonder if, uh, I'm hoping people watching uh, this interview will have seen Rodeo at this point, but um, maybe just if you can give a little bit of a explainer of the film, um, mm. that would be great. This is my first feature and um, it's the story about this uh, young girl whose name is Julia and uh, the way she crosses uh, this group of um, bikers who are uh, completely passionate with this um, uh, practice uh, of bike life like lifting the dirt bike um, doing tricks, um, gathering on the roads and uh, training and uh, um, being free and uh, developing relationships, super strong relationship. And it's a male dominated world, so uh, she entered in it and she wants, she, she wants in the movie to prove and to be recognized and to find her place and to find a safe place to, to develop herself and to uh, empowerment herself. Um, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's a coming of age story, but you can find uh, also in the film this kind of surreal uh, narrative line, but it's, it's also a thriller movie because you have uh, this uh, heist uh, movie inside the, uh, the, the story. Um, so yeah, it, there, there are a lot of layers. It's about mythology, mm -hmm. the bike life mythology, but the female mythology as well. Mm. And how did you come to be interested in bike life and want to make it the subject of uh, this mm. film? I came across this idea when I was uh, still uh, in La Femis, the public school in Paris. Um, and I, I saw a lot of uh, videos of uh, dirt uh, bikers riding, doing a lot of tricks. And I saw, and I read this article uh, with a lot of pictures, and when I saw all of that, um, it uh, reminded me a lot what I saw when I was a child mm -hmm. in the suburbs, because I would uh, watch, um, I would see um, uh, dirt bikes in front of my building, crossing the garden, the park uh, in front of my of my building. So, but I did not know that since this time, since my childhood, a lot of communities. Uh, were created by uh, passionate uh, bikers. And I, I began to, to shoot um, a short film with them, Dreaming of Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, a way to, um, 
to to talk about the practice in um, in a really naturalistic point of view, like um, uh, to a, um, yeah to approach to to um, to talk about the sense, the, the meaning of the practice, you know. Um, but it's not a documentary; it, it's more naturalistic in the shape. And uh, and then yes, I I did a, a video clip as well and another short film with them. Yeah, they began. I began to be um, a kind of member in the in the crew and a kind of uh, member of this this family. I wanted to come back to talking about going to the cinema um, as we are in Curzon Soho um, and ask what's the film that you've seen the most in your life? I think it's Taxi Driver. Each year I see Taxi Driver and Ap Apocalypse Now as well. Um, but no, I have like this kind of guilty pleasure to see yeah, French comedy, this kind of stuff, but uh, maybe I won't talk about it because I'm so ashamed, you know. <laughs> but, There's uh, no shame yeah, in the cinema. I have to be serious. <laughs> I also wanted to know, you mentioned that rodeo and um, a lot of the films that you were maybe inspired by have these kinds of genre mashups or they're, they mix genre in a way and rodeo has this sort of thriller elements almost and yeah, this coming of age story. Were there film examples kind of working within that genre space that you took inspiration from? I think a film from the 70s, um, American movies from the 70s are super I mean, when you see in French, we, we only have like this uh, translation, uh, French title. So, Panique à Nidel Park, you know, this mm. film about uh, heroin uh, with Al Pacino. It's mm. one of his uh, first uh, role. Mm -hmm. And you are in uh, Central Park in New York and it's the crisis of uh, heroin. And so this film for me is one of, it's, it's such a, a deep movie because it's super, naturalistic but it's you know that all is structured and written uh, in terms of rhythm in terms of emotion and mm -hmm. because when I began to write the script um, I didn't want to you know to put uh, okay uh, let's put uh, yes this coming of age story and then maybe the serial lines and maybe the the, the mob movie, the, the gangster movie inside. It was really something that was given by the, the female character because she is so spiritual, she is so um, connected to the invisible world in the movie that for sure I want to see the world through her eyes and I want to, so I, I, I will find a kind of surreal, surreal, um, uh, surnatural um, uh, way of seeing the, the, the world, you know, so that's why there is this narrative line, this genre, I mean, and uh, for sure the gangster movie, it's, it's given by her hunger to, to be recognized and so, and the performances she, she does to be recognized and she, she steal and, uh, and it's a way to, to be, to show off and to, and to, to be, um, uh, yeah, to, 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 to it's a way to um, to construct her identity as well. So that's why there is this um, this gangster um, movie lines in the film. And of course, she she is a woman inside a, a male-dominated world. So for sure, you have this uh, coming-of-age story because it's about how to uh, it's about struggling um, to empower um, empowerment and how. Yes, how you break um, assignments, uh, injunction, injunctions, um, social injunctions, um, how you break uh, gender stereotypes as well, because she crossed the lines all the time. Um, she's a character who is really free mm. because she doesn't want to be defined so much. Like she's in between the gender mm -hmm. uh, representations. She's in between the the, um, the world of the dead and the, 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 the life, and she's in between the dreams and the reality, so she's always crossing the lines. And I, that's why I think this uh, character is really precious, because super singular and hybrid, 
and for sure the, the film is really hybrid because of that, because, uh, because the, the character led uh, this energy, you know. And the film has a lot of energy, a lot of uh, a really strong rhythm and a lot of um, intensity because of the character, because she, 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 she brought all of that, yeah. Yeah, and uh, this is Julia, played by um, Julie Ledru, and she's, I think when you have coming of age narratives, especially about young women or, or young non-binary people, I think, you know, those don't really exist as such, the films about non-binary people in the same way, but when it comes to young women, there's always such a set path that they're following in this coming of age story, or they're reaching a kind of conclusion. And I think the beauty of Julia is that she's so fluid and open, and yeah. there's no restriction on her, yeah. on, a, on the path. That For me, she's like a river mm -hmm. with the, you know, the stream and the energy of the river. And you can't, you can't stop a river, you know, because uh, the river can invade and flood, you know, mm -hmm. all the territories, you know. It's something that you can barely stop, and um, she's fluid and and she she's always in movement. And uh, at the beginning of the movie, uh, the frame of the camera, you know, uh, wants to catch her, you know, uh, to follow her, to film her. Mm. But she's so free that she wants to escape even the frame of the of the camera. So, so. Um, yeah, being in movement for me, it's being free, it's to break, uh, you know, um, uh, to break the, the fixity, um, to, to, to escape the gaze, um, and not to be defined, you know. What was the experience like of premiering the film at Cannes and seeing it in the cinema for the first time with an audience? <laughs> Yeah, it was really impressive and really important for us to be to see the film together, and it was really important for me to bring all the the, the Bibon crew, all the actors uh, in Cannes Film Festival, and they were so proud. And uh, for most uh, of them, they discovered the movie, except for Antonia Burezi and uh, Julie Ledru, because uh, they, they saw the movie before the premiere in Cannes. But uh, all the bikers recognize themselves, um, uh, I mean, with the, the intensity in the movie, uh, the emotional approach, uh, with uh, the adrenaline, the shoot of, of adrenaline, and uh, how I depict uh, the, the passion of uh, riding a dirt bike and, and being obsessed with that, you know, like an addiction. So it was important uh, for me to receive that because it was the first feeling uh, of, uh, you know, uh, the, the people who are really involved in this movement. It was, oh, in terms of uh, sociologic approach, it was really interesting to see uh, how different groups of people were uh, connected inside the same room discovering this movie. And uh, every time, like, there were there were this group of let's say older people who are really close to cinema who used to, to go to theaters. I love that. I love this song. Uh, yeah, and um, and yeah, let's say older people and um, and just uh, aside, you can find uh, queer people as well. Um, so I was so proud <laughs> to, it was kind of gift for me. Um, it's really interesting that the movie could gather yeah. all those different people, even if they are super different, super um, disconnect, let's say. And for me, cinema, uh, I'm doing cinema, I'm making movie to, to create a relation, like to create links and to, and to rebuild this kind of links uh, that the society could uh, break and could destroy. And we are all in front of the same piece and the same films and it's so beautiful to, yeah, to experience that. that. That's wonderful. Uh, thank you so much, Lola. This has been great. Um, thank you really very much to receive me. <laughs>